Line. We're so glad to have you tonight. I'm Pastor Benny. We realize and we recognize that there's a lot of stuff on television and you have decided to tune into something that's clean in the air. And we thank you for inviting us into your home or wherever you might be. We don't take that lightly and I pray that you will be pleased. You'll, we're here to honor the Lord tonight and uh, you will enjoy the program. We've, listen, we've got great music tonight. Uh, you're going to really enjoy Court Heath. He's been with us many, many times. And then uh, Tammy Halterman is with us tonight. They're going to bless your heart as they sing, I promise. Guests tonight are uh, people that uh, I've known for quite some time. Don Harkins is with us again. And then, of course, the Dr. Marshall Williams. And they have a book that they put together about some of the great hymns of the church. Now, listen to me. If you would like... Uh, to hear or hear something about uh, one of your favorite hymns, call the prayer partner. You see the number down there on your screen, 864-244-1616. If you'll call that number and just give us your favorite hymn, all right? Just tell us, what is your favorite hymn? What is it that you like? We'll write that down. They'll get it to us, and we'll try to give you some explanation behind that hymn, okay? You might, you might, uh, may not know all there is behind it, but if you'll do that, please. Our scripture tonight comes to us from Psalm 28, verse 7. Listen to the word of our Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise him. From Psalm 28, verse 7. Prayer partners are standing by. Now, come on. You call us, would you please? 864-244-1616. Call, listen, we want to encourage you. We want to pray with you. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus personally as your Savior, we can tell you all about Him, and we'll give you an invitation so that you can ask Him into your heart. You really can. But that can't happen if you don't go to the phone and call us, okay? Also, remember... Call us if uh, you just want to call with your favorite hymn. Call us. That's all you need to do, all right? Please, we want to hear from you. Remember this, we always are in need of prayer partners. Give us a call at uh, Monday through Friday, 864-244-1616. You're going to enjoy the music tonight. I promise you, Tammy Halterman's going to sing Amazing Grace. Come on, Tammy, sing it now, girl. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Thank you, Tammy. She and the court are going to be singing all this evening, and you don't want to go anywhere from that, let me tell you. And playing that piano is uh, the pianist from the Tremont Church of God, that's Sandy Conant. And uh, uh, Sandy, we thank you. We're so glad you're here, and we thank you for playing so very, very, very much. We want you to know it is an honor to have you. Always, oh, let me tell you something about my, my guest tonight. Uh, over the years, you know, when you get with these guys over and over, as many times as, say, Don Harkins and I have been together and Dr. Marshall Williams, we've been together, we kind of know one another and we kind of learn how to anticipate every time they've got something new, a new book, a new story, they've got something new. But I want to tell you something. I'm always honored to be with you two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being thank here, you, Don. Pastor. Thank you, all boy. I Good mean, it is our pleasure. what a joy, Marshall. Dr. Williams, so glad to see you. Last time, uh, you were a little under the weather. We'd missed you, but we're glad you're 100% now. Yes, sir. All right. Now, we want to know something. You've been coming on, Don, and, and you've been writing books and, and the Psalms, for example. You've got about four books, I think, in, in the Psalms. And uh, you, uh, we know that uh, you have a great love for uh, the Mill Villages in, in Greenville County. But tonight, we've got a book. And uh, it's called, He Keeps Me Singing. And I like what it says at the very top. Why should we sing? Well, you know, um, well, I want to ask you the question, Don. Why should we sing? I want to I wanna hear, I want you to tell me uh, your, your response to well, that. Well, I've, uh, I've been singing since I was a little one. Never uh, out in front of crowds, but I've always loved music. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. My mother uh, loved music. I can hear her tonight even singing, uh, "'Tis So Sweet to Trust, Trust in Jesus. Jesus." That was her Amen. favorite song, and, and I can hear her singing that Amen. as I a little boy. But I grew up listening to music all the time in the house where I grew up, in church, and I just fell in love with music. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, when we started thinking about this book, uh, uh, while I was finishing the other book. Right, right. This book about uh, Come Follow Me, it's about discipleship, uh, mm -hmm. prayer. You know, one of the first times you and I talked, we talked about discipleship. We did. Very first That's time. That's our start, yeah, yeah way sure back. Uh -huh. But uh, it had this idea of uh, a book about uh, people's favorite songs. So we've got about 28 individuals who've submitted their favorite song and uh, hymn that's been inspirational to them over the years right. and helped them through hard places. And and we took a uh, poll when uh -huh. we first started working on this okay. and, uh, and uh, had about 65 people who responded. And, uh, and our poll uh, came out with, uh, of course, Amazing, Amazing Grace okay. is the favorite with the uh, Tammy did a great job with she that She did, tonight. wonderful really job. Did. And How Great Thou Art was oh number my. two. Oh my, yes. Uh -huh. The Old Rugged Cross, uh, three, Great is Thy Faithfulness, oh. Blessed Assurance. Yes, mercy. Vi victory in Jesus, oh what my. a friend we have in Jesus. I'm going to start singing in a minute. Watch and out the, now. And the love of God. So all of these oh were uh, uh, 
people responded with their favorites right. and we, we kept a poll just right. to put in the book. It's, it's listed right. in the book. And of course, I remember you always enjoy it when y'all sing out of the Red Back Hymn or you just, you love that. I, I forgot to bring that with me tonight, but <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. I know, I know, and there's some great song, great hymns oh, in there, my gracious. It was printed in 1951. Yeah. And over six million copies have been mm -hmm, sold mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. since then. But, but the book consists of the a story about why we should sing, in a, or a, an article. Uh, one of the ladies that we oh, know, it's uh, right. loves music, sings music, uh, and uh, wrote this article. And uh, but this article, then we've got uh, 28 entries of the song, mm -hmm. and we have the lyrics to the song, and also a story behind the song. Right, when, and people need well, uh, Dr. Williams. I noticed that you you wrote the preface. Um, do you enjoy music? Do you sing? Absolutely. Sure enough. Okay, I, I, didn't, I did not realize that. Huh. And I actually grew up, my parents worked at the Dunny Mill on second shift when I was a little, from the time I was born until I was about six years old, and my aunt played the piano at First Assembly of God. Uh -huh. So I grew up standing on the first pew. As a matter of fact, the, art, the song I put in the book, is, It Is No Secret What God Can Do, Ooh, came yes. out that time. But... I actually grew up sitting with her on next to the piano until I was about five or six years old. So music, and in my mother's family had a, a group that sang yeah. and uh, played instruments. So uh, music has been a part of our, my Christian experience since right. I can ever remember. Now, do you play an instrument or do you just sing? No, sir. I don't play. You, I wish I could play the piano, but I don't. Mm -hmm. well, Sandy played it tonight. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, That's my. a gift from the Lord. And, and y'all get Amen. to do that every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So, see, if you're looking for a great church, to go worship in every Sunday morning, you can do that at Tremont Church of God. There you go. Uh, I mean, you can, you'll see Don over there and you'll see. Now, you're still pastoring. I, if the Lord lets me live in November, I'll start my 39th year at, at Emmanuel. I've been there mm. 38 years. My, 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 my. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, they, and they still love you and you still love them. We hadn't run anybody <laughs> lately. <I'm telling> you. <laughs> No. Right. It's been a great experience. It really has, Pastor. Yeah. I mean, we have, uh, I came there in the, in the mid-80s when the, a lot of the, the community churches were still thriving and still uh, having great attendance. But right. as you know, yeah. the, the whole church scene, the ecclesiastical scene in Greenville has yeah. just dramatically changed. And changed. the community churches now are few and far between. Yes. It doesn't yes. matter if you're Baptist or Presbyterian or right. Methodist or even Church of God. Mm -hmm. the, uh, it's just that that com that era of ministry is just about faded away, you know. It, it really has. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, but it's exciting to see that y'all got some of the great, great hymns. What what inspired the book? What uh, again, you, you told me about? Uh, the thought just came to me while I was still working on this book right. mm -hmm. and, uh, about... Uh, like I said, I've always loved music, and I sing every day, pretty much all day long. Yeah. And uh, and I just had the, uh, I guess a word from the Lord just uh, told me to do this. And uh, I hadn't planned to do another book, but uh, <laughs> all these ideas keep popping up. But you've been writing prolifically now for the last <laughs> five to six, seven years, Don. But this Don't is stop. a fifth book fifth in this book. series yeah. where we have uh, input from our friends and right. Uh, family and different Churches. ones, and uh, but uh, and it just kept pouring into my mind. And the songs that I sing, two or three songs every day. I sing in the bathroom and uh, yeah. in my car going down. So I've always had a song in my heart, even though I don't sing uh, in front of pe other people. Uh, I love music. I love the words to them oh. and uh, the melodies, and uh, and uh, so this is what's. What came out of all this? You know, in, in my church, I, I always tell my people, uh, I'm at El Bethel as an intentional interim, and I always tell them, I'll see you next Sunday with a Bible in one hand, an offering envelope in the other hand, and a song in your heart. Keep a song. I, I, in mean, your... I mean, and you know, and the thing, when you get saved, whether you sing it or not, you're going to have a song put in your heart. You can't help it. A new song. I, I, it, a and, new song. And so, I, I mean, I, I'm like you. The, the wonderful thing about driving the car is that I can sing as loud and on or off key as I want. Amen. And nobody's going to stop me. 
There I mean, you, you know, it, and I just have the time of my life. And, and I do that every day. And but I, I can't too. imagine p the people who don't have a soul in their heart. They, I mean, I mean, it's just. Uh, if you Gets know me Jesus, through the day. If you yeah. if you know Jesus, you got to have a song you in your heart to. somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have to. I mean, I, I mean, to not have a song in your heart, have you had that experience? I mean, I'm not trying to judge anybody, yeah. but it, but anyways, and uh -huh. so with that, um, what have uh, have you? What has been the response uh, from the people? Well, uh, it's uh, everyone was will, people I contacted were willing to contribute. Yeah, and. Uh, some of them have contributed to the other books, but uh, we got about as many as that we could handle in, in the yeah. book. So yeah. everyone's been so helpful in, uh, in this regard. Uh, and listen, we just got the book back today. I so. got to ask you this question. What is Don Harkin's favorite hymn? What if I, if I call, if you called in tonight, what would you say is your favorite hymn? In the book, in the book I wrote about uh, <laughs> How, great. How Great Thou Art. Okay. Okay. But I would say my favorite one, and I wrote about that because no one else did in, in the... Okay. Is The Love of God. The, the love of God. Is greater da, far da, da, than da, tongue or da, men da, could da, ever tell. Da, da, I, all I can do is hung and la la, I it, guess. Uh, I don't know if the words in uh, front of me. But that's, that would be my favorite, I think. I've got to ask Dr. Williams, what would your favorite be, sir? Him wise? Uh huh. I would say Victory in Jesus. Yeah which ironically all the years was kept out of the Baptist hymnal in the last, well, not the last, but they finally put it back in the yes. Baptist hymnal, but we've been singing victory in Jesus. Yeah. And, and then it is no secret what God can do. Of course, it's not a hymn, but right. it's in the book. But that was my favorite yeah. I put in the book. And you know, isn't it amazing, is it not amazing that Baptist didn't put it in the hymnal for so right. many years? I mean, of course, I was too young, I guess, to really understand it or know it, but. But uh, but the great hymns, my gracious! I mean, when if if a hymn's going to honor the Lord Jesus, sing it, sing it! I mean, oh my, my heard Lord. an old old story. Oh we my. were talking about this before we before we came on the air. Yeah. Years ago, uh, churches, the pianist and the organist or whoever would be singing, and people would start singing, and the people would start coming to the altar, even before the preacher or the staff came out, and the preacher would come out, he did. Sometimes didn't even have to start preaching. I mean, he didn't have to preach. People were already there yep. for whatever need was in their life. But it was, mo the motivation came through the music they heard when they came through those doors. If you came through the doors at Tremont, when I was a little boy, and my dad was saved at Tremont, but when you came through those doors, you you felt the spirit of the Lord through sure. the music that was sure. being played. And then when they started singing, I mm. mean, Preacher Paul, he just had, it. he was ready to go. I mean, just when he walked out sure. there in those days, and years ago, you know, obviously, but and, and, you know, uh, if there's anything, as a pastor, you know this, music sets oh, the tone. Absolutely, and yeah. you've got to have phenomenal music this day and age, and uh, I mean, you have to, because it 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 brings. You know, there's a psychology of worship, and I use that in a very uh, positive way, right. of. Uh, you know, the words, the music, the melodies, it penetrates your heart and your soul. And uh, sometimes you hear those old, old hymns. Uh, I was uh, glancing through the book and I saw, Give of your best to the master. Mm -hmm. Give of, I, excuse me, singing. But I, how long has it been since I've sung that song? I haven't, I haven't heard it in years. Ooh, <laughs> my, my, my. Well, you know, we grew up in as well. In the era of here in Greenville, of course, uh, Oliver Green and Harold Seitler, yes. A. Howard Wilson, Dr. Bob Jones, Dan Greer, <laughs> all those preachers, and they wanted music. When they came out, it was he stopped being, sometimes they'd be singing. He said, it'd take me 20 minutes to get the congregation back to where I can preach because the music wasn't, it wasn't moved, the people weren't moved. Right, no. But when you have music, the, as I say, people coming in, and, and it's, it's so much easier on the pastor preaching. Oh, when the when the music is, has set the people's hearts, you've got to have spirit anointed music. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, Absolutely. then I'm just telling you, the Lord. I mean, He just He takes over, and all you need to do is be obedient to what He's put on your heart to preach or teach, and 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 the spirit falls. I mean, it just Absolutely. does. Absolutely. And and there's something. You know, I grew up with music. I love music, and. Um, 
I grew up with it, and so, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of these that if I want to sing in the pulpit, now I don't sing. I mean, I, these folks around here know I don't sing. They don't <laughs> let me sing that much. But, you know, in the pulpit, if I want to sing a song, I'm going to sing. If I'm preaching, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to sing. I'm All just, right. just going to do it. <laughs> you know, the story is told of Dr. Graham in, uh, when they were in London years ago when the ministry was first started. They, all, they said it was music that was kind of, everybody was responding because of the music. And the first night, Dr. Graham and Cliff Barris, who used to live here in Graham before he right. passed away, I remember him telling me the story, but talking about that, it's well documented that before the service, he told, told Cliff, said, not one note. And then he looked at George Beverly Shea, and he said, not one note. Don Houston and, and, and Ed Smith said, not, not one note of music. And when he finished preaching, he prayed, and, and they just stood there. And he said, all of a sudden, and Cliff said, you could hear the, bench, the chair starting to flip up, and people started coming. And for that whole crusade, they never played at the end of the service one note of music Mama. because the people in the, uh, who were criticizing the music because it was so good, they said that's what gets people stirred up. But that was one example of where music wasn't played, but the Spirit of God moved. But it was the music was so powerful is what got those other people upset. Sure, you know? sure. It was just so powerful. And, and today, I mean, it, it is just a matter of fact that people go to churches today uh, I, I, for example, I may ask somebody, why do you go to that church? Love the music. Love, Love the music. The music. And, and the music is the gospel uh, with melodies. I mean, it really is. Amen. And, uh, you know, some of the great, great hymns were written from some pastor's manuscripts. I mean, I think of Amazing Grace. Down in, uh, in St. Kitts, there is, uh, a, a, there is a museum there at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Yep. And they have a copy of uh, Captain Newton's manuscript of Amazing Grace. Right. And it, it's not the original, but it is. Handwritten. Yeah. And I've it, been there. I mean, yeah. it's just fascinating, yeah. you know. And I, I hope you're enjoying our conversation. Now, please, if you have a favorite hymn, let us hear from you. Just call us and let us know what it is. There are lots of them out there. Tammy Halterman, she's got another favorite. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have Jesus. Come on, Tammy, lead us if you would. I'd rather have Jesus than see.
this world affords today. Thank you. Tammy, thank you. Bless our yeah. heart. And we have, so far, let me tell you, you've called in and you've said your favorite hymn is Amazing Grace. Someone you called in and said that your favorite song was Hymn. Uh, someone else called in and said their favorite song was Chain Breaker, one of the more contemporary. And then we have someone who called in and said their favorite song, It Is Well. We're going to sing that. Uh, we're going to sing that tonight. So don't. Don't go anywhere, okay? Uh, Wilma Stevens, you call. So don't go anywhere, Wilma. Wilma We're going to sing that for you. Now, listen, we just were singing, uh, I'd rather have Jesus. Jesus. Now, you've got the background of that, Don. Yes, a little, a little brief background. Yeah, let's that hear we, that we, But Ray uh, F. Miller wrote that song. Okay. Her, her husband was a minister in the Church of the Nazarene, uh -huh. Nazarene, and he passed away. And she began teaching piano and music to all the young people. She wanted all the young people to grow up with, with a song in their heart yeah. and, and to, to know music. But her father had been a drunk and uh, she was at the service one night when he got saved. And, my, my. and his testimony was, uh, I'd rather have Jesus. And she took the words from that and wrote, wrote the song. Mm. And, and you know. Beautiful song. I love uh, the know, words to it. Sometime, and of course, uh, Bev right. Shea took oh, that my, yes. later and sang it many, many times. Oh, I was going to say, can't we just remember hearing George Beverly Shea <laughs> singing our, that Ooh. deep voice of his? But she there. wrote that back in the, the late 1800s. Late 18. So we've been singing that now for uh, 140 years, maybe. Yeah. 30, they brought 40. it to his house on a Sunday morning that they took, they went in there in the house there and started playing. First time I ever heard it was on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and he started singing it. Uh, there at the house, and then of course that became just about his signature song, yeah. except for "How Great Thou Art." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so uh, and, uh, now remember, you call us tonight. We want to hear more of your favorite hymns, and those prayer partners are standing by. We've got plenty of uh, of you calling in with your prayer requests, and we want you to call. Please come on, give us a call. We want to pray for you collectively at the end of this hour. Tell now, tell me. Uh, uh, Don, with, with all of this, I mean, will there be a sequel to a book like this? I mean, there's so many great hymns. Marshall, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Dr. William, I want to, I, wanna, I mean, will there be a, uh, I mean, because there's sure. so many, so many songs. Oh, you know? they are. I mean, uh, are. Uh, could we, there? we had uh, a good many that were, when we did the poll, that wasn't even on the, we made the top list, but right. the beautiful songs that were turned in. So, uh, Right now, I'm working on another book. Okay. And uh, there may be a sequel. I will have to check with Marshall because he does a lot of the uh, layout. layout and, uh -huh. uh, it helps us so much, and I appreciate his and faithfulness. Let me, and, and let me tell you something. You need, where, how can they get this book? They can uh, put my address up there. Yep. $20. Can we put to Don's address up there? Uh, $20 for this, and there it is. Three. We'll get you a copy. Yes, you're uh, going to autograph my copy. All right. And, and if you call, he'll autograph your copy. Now, come on. Uh, he and Dr. Williams will be glad to autograph them for you. Uh, just write to him, 308 South Severn Circle there in easily 29642 UCD Hark 1 at charter.net or 864 201 5875. And uh, both these gentlemen will be glad to autograph you a personal copy. And uh, I'm telling you, you will be through. And you know, I was I was saying to uh, to both of you as right as we were going on the, the air. I know I don't think we have this in the still store, but I, I want I want David can Judy Aiken Young always does a great job. And I can can we get a good a good uh, close up of that? She does a lot of their. Uh, uh, let me see. There you go. Graphics. She does a lot of your graphics. And let me get my hand out of the way without spilling that over. And that is the Methodist Church at, uh, where did you say, Don? Monaghan. Monaghan. Monaghan Methodist Church there. And uh, that's, that's, she 
drew that. She does so much work for you. She does. And she's and in the textile heritage yeah, and the, yeah, society. And, and she also. really does. And, uh, and so, uh, great, Judy, uh, we just want artist. to thank you for, for your great work. And so with the sequel, I mean, were you surprised? Uh, my question is to both of you. Were you surprised at the songs that maybe didn't make the top? Well, there number. was a few I was you right. know, surprised, but uh, most of them were. Yeah, yeah. In the, where but, there's enough to, to do another sequel, I'm not I, sure. I, but, I, I bet there would be. Yeah. I mean, I, I, but for example, could I ask you what song? I mean, I, I go through them and, and I see them here and, uh, woo, I mean, uh, uh, hold to God's unchanging hand. I know he heard my prayer. I know who holds tomorrow. I must tell Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, I start singing if I keep. Uh, but of all, in a row, old one in there that I haven't heard in years is the old count was settled long ago. Right now, you, you know Donna that? Abercrombie, yeah. on page one twenty-five. The old account was. How does that go? Help me, gentlemen. I, I don't remember. The I don't remember. Count it was a gospel sing, gospel group saying a lot of that. Long ago, long ago, oh, it was all settled oh long, ago. Settled long, long Hallelujah. ago. Hallelujah. Yeah. Great, great uh, uh, choir see, song. This is before my time, not theirs. <laughs> but <my time. laughs> but you, if you heard it, you would. You I, would, I, yeah, would yeah, it. yeah. I, I would, yeah, I would. But all of these I'm recognizing in here. I mean, I, I really and truly, um, our favorite hymns, they are The Old Rugged Cross, Blessed Assurance, Victory in Jesus, and what a friend we have in you. Yeah. Woo. Let me ask you, gentlemen, this. Are you afraid, and, and I mean that in, in, a, in a, not a negative tone, but a, 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 a warning tone, are you afraid that we're going to lose some of the great hymns? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. because we already have. We already yeah. have, yeah. You know, Brother Benny, most folks don't realize it, but their theology probably comes from the hymns they've heard and learned Correct. instead of the sermons they've heard. Yes, sir. You I can talk to that. someone about what they believe and they'll it come as a result of a song they learned, as, but they couldn't remember who the preacher was at the church or what right. sermon he pre preached. Yes, sir. But they can tell you about the songs they learned and they develop their own theology, especially about heaven. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Yeah. Yeah. When people talk about I've got a mansion, they get that from the songs they've heard right. or victory in Jesus right. Right. Uh, or he, he lives. All those songs. And of course, when Bill Gaither wrote Because He Lives, people started that became part of their theology sure. of life. Sure. And it came as a result of a song. They just, but, and, and then, of course, like the midnight cry, for the example. The midnight cry. You know, yeah. I mean, how many times people will hear, I'm going to look at the eastern sky. Yeah. You know, those clouds are going to part. And but, Jesus steps out. Go ahead, Don. I'm one sorry. thing about these old uh, hymns, uh, usually the fourth verse has something to do with heaven or Jesus coming soon. Right. So there's a great theology in these. Yeah. We've been and there. when we memorize them, we... we Keep them forever, you right. know. Yeah, well, we do, and and you know, I and I know that we've got to to meet the needs of of all of our folks that come to worship, and uh, I know that uh, there's some transitioning that's going on. But with the newer contemporary songs, I I love them, but I my greatest fear is if we're not careful, we can birth a generation who will have not one clue about what. Amazing Grace? What is that song? I that generation's that. already been birthed. Yeah, yeah. The fear that in the church today, not I don't say necessarily a fear, I understand. but right. the reality of it is they're growing up without the basis of the, the theology of the hymns right. and right. The, the spiritual basis and the, and the scriptural basis of almost all the hymns uh, that have filled these hymn books all these years yeah. uh, is not part of the makeup of what the right. music is in the church today. Right. You know, I, I do like some of the, uh, how they've changed the beat to some of the old hymns and they're still singing sure. them. And I, it's fine with me. But, uh, but I think that we're going, to, we're going to sell this next generation short if we don't keep these songs before them. Uh, I, you know, Somehow, they yeah. need to. They, you, I mean, it has to be. Um, uh, the church that I serve right now, El, El Bethel, on the intentional interim, uh, we we try every Sunday to have at least one old hymn in there. And we may have very progressive music, contemporary music, 
And I like that, but I like the hymn. And it's amazing because when we bring in that old hymn, uh, we were thinking about the, who can wash away my sin, nothing. Everybody sings, but then when yeah. you get into more of these contemporary, not, not everybody knows them. That's right. Very few and, sometimes and, and the sing singing, the, and the, the new ones. And the sound of the congregation singing becomes softer and softer just because they don't know the words. But there's nothing like a, a congregation singing out on a old, Ooh, I, old. When, when the church sings, it is well with my soul. Oh, my, my I'm ready to go to glory. <laughs> there you go. That's absolutely correct. So uh, with in your studies here, uh, when I go through the book, uh, and, and, I, and I want you to know, folks, I've not read, read the book, but I, I'm just... Uh, for example, I've just turned over here to page 105. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. William Bradbury mm -hmm. wrote that. And uh, he, he died in 1868. And uh, I don't know how old this song would be, but it would be an old song. It would. And, and Most I, of them are. And I grew up singing them. Now, I mean, I, I grew up singing these songs. And probably most of you did as well. And uh, and so and so as we go as we go through here and, and we're and we're looking at, at these songs, is there a, is there a particular song or songs that either one of you want to share a little background on that we might be surprised? At well, your most of the a lot of the songs is interesting to know that it came out of some type of hardship, uh, some kind of tragedy. Yeah, and it's a res the writer's response to what happened, it just is like well with uh, my soul, right, right? Just right with the uh, what a friend uh, we have in Jesus. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, losing Horatio S Spafford lost his, everything. He sure did. Lost his daughters and wife. And uh, it reminds me of Job a little bit. He lost all yeah. of his five all children, ten children, yeah. Yeah. ten children, uh -huh. and the and the and the sea. The tragedy at sea, and it was in, when, the, in the Chicago uh, fire. He yeah. lost all of his uh, real estate holdings. I mean, yeah. and, and yet, but yet he uh, he was had, was a friend with of D. L. Moody, yeah. and he'd been well fa uh, founded in the, the gospel, yes. and uh, yes. and he knew uh, what he believed. When that, even though that happened, he still said it is well yeah. with my soul. With my soul, he yeah. they sailed. He, he sailed at sea where his family was lost, and during that time is when he wrote, wrote It song. Is Well With My Soul. And, and that's something. He was at though, sea. You know. You know. And, and you know, I, when I think about It Is Well With My Soul, when we went to Romania back in 1988 or 89, right after Ceausescu had been assassinated and the, and the, the wall was coming down, we went to a Romanian church, and it was amazing when we sang... Uh, uh, in Romanian, it is bine a zu, bine a zu, and when they sang bine a zu, the ladies would take their white oh, handkerchiefs and wave them. And wave them. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've just, seen. just, oh my gracious, and and um, I mean, how I'm here, here I'm. Talk, talking about it some 31, 32 years later, I yeah. still remember it like yesterday. I, I've seen the same thing in Romania myself. Yeah, yeah. In Cluj, the First Baptist Church Cluj. Cluj, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah they yeah. would lay that. Yes. But the, the Amazing Grace, it's a universal song. Sure it's it sung is. all over the world. You can recognize it no matter what the tongue. It doesn't matter. And nothing is more beautiful than the bagpipe. Oh, my. And amazing it, Grace. And, you know, I think that uh, right now with, with uh, the death of uh, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, there will be bagpipes in Amazing Grace. If it has not already been oh, played, yeah. it will be played well, yeah. will in, be. in the funeral but, march, I, I think, somewhere along the line. And uh, all genres of music have recorded yeah. Amazing Grace, country well, and all the different it, it speaks. types. It does. Uh, you know, uh, Brother Ben, the song that I chose, It Is No Secret, what God can do, of course, yes. uh, when it was written, and uh, he was... You know, he was the main uh, radio personality there in Los Angeles, California. Uh -huh. Stuart and uh, yeah. Stuart, Stuart Hamlin. Hamlin. Mm -hmm. And the Billy Graham crusade came there. And in the preparation for that crusade, uh, he had gone to a prayer meeting with his wife. 
and uh, later on he asked to go to see Dr. Graham and, uh, and at his hotel, and they got him out of a meeting in there when he prayed. Mm -hmm. But the first broadcast, a live broadcast in, across the nation on TV uh, was the night that he, they asked, he wrote the words, it is no secret what God can do. Well, the story behind that is John Wayne ran into Stuart Hamlin there in Hollywood mm -hmm. and said, I heard about you making a big change in your life. And Stuart Hamlin looked up and said, you know, John, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for us, he can do for you. And John Wayne looked at him and said, you ought to put that in a song. That was the impetus for him to write Whoa. that song. It is no secret is what God can do. Is that it? That's mm -hmm. true. Folks, aren't you learning something That's tonight? That's in the book. Too. Yeah, it's, in the, it's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. And you listen, you need to get the book. Right. And it not only will be a blessing to you, you're going to see some songs in there that maybe wherever you go to church, maybe you haven't sung some of these songs in quite a while. Stand by me, and I'm not talking about the movie either. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, you know, how, how long has it been softly and tenderly? Jesus is calling, mm. calling for you. And for, I mean, you know, the, those, I mean, these are songs, I, you, you just can't get enough of them, mm. can you? I mean, you, you, you spoke a while ago about the changes. That particular part of the evangelical service, the invitation, with a, with a forceful invitation hymn, is fading away as yeah, well. Yeah. You just don't have that yeah. that impact of a end of a service and mm -hmm. a sermon, mm -hmm. and the Lord's moving in people's hearts and lives. And the invitation hymn can be very powerful. Very. To uh, I had a young man one. He he had never been. He wasn't going to church, but some of his friends got saved, and he said, "I don't know what to do." And uh, his friends brought him to church that next Sunday. And he, they said, when they stand up at the end and start singing, you hear that piano playing, said, you walk forward. And that's all he knew to do when he heard them start <laughs> singing at the end. And he came and knelt at that altar and got saved. And he's been involved in ministry since that day. Mm. Listen, we're talking with Dr. Marsha Williams and Don Harkins about the, their latest book, He Keeps Me Singing. And as we're talking about singing, Court Heath is going to sing, It Is Well With My Soul. Come on, Court, lead us to the throne. Faith shall be sung, 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't touch something on your heart, your wood's wet. I'm just going to tell you right now, okay? Uh, you need to get out in the sun a little bit more. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. That's great, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Many of you have called in. Let me, just, uh, let me just read some of the songs that you're calling in. We'll be talking more. Lift High Christ um, Over the Hilltop. One Bunch day at a time. Is that in there? Have yes, you okay. No. Uh, we had uh, it's in here. my okay. son in law. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, we the prayer. No. No, uh, that's another Wonderful. great song. Uh, without him is another one. Someone no one ever cared for me like oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh my God! Don't don't start singing. Okay. And I mean the, these uh, keep calling. All right. We like to hear what your favorite songs are. We really do. We, we thank you so much. What were you going to say, Don, I, before I interrupted you? I'm sorry. There's a uh, story behind that song, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Talk Jesus. Talk about it. Let's hear it. Charles Weigel was an evangelist in Chattanooga and had been on the road and uh, came home and his wife had left. She didn't want to live that lifestyle anymore. Right. So he went in depression and uh, were out of ministry for a year or two and... Uh, one morning he was up early and the Lord just spoke to him and said, write this song, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever cared for me like him. Can't, you know, at, when you read, you know, so many times we know that a lot of your country songs um, and the writers who write them, uh, some, some are my friends, and they, and they write them out of their hurt and heartache but you have to understand, when, when you write a hymn, you're not just writing it for fans. When you write one of these songs that we've been talking about, you're not writing it for fans or for the church. You're writing it for the glory of God. Amen. You're giving Jesus praise. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the big, big difference that I tell folks uh, in writing. Uh, you know, Christian writers is wonderful, but, but uh, still. Martin, Dr. William, what were you going to say? Another example of that, Brother Benny, the church where I pastor, Emanuel Baptist Church in the Mills Mill community, a young man grew up in that church whose name was Leon Chandler, whose mom in the early prayer meeting you suggested the name Emmanuel. So he was born and raised in our church there, of course. And then he got married, and his daughter, Carol uh, Chandler, Emory now, and uh, her, she wrote in here about that song her dad wrote. Uh, about in the mid '60s, I want to be just like Jesus. Oh my! And if you ever knew Brother Leon, that was really his personal testimony, and that the history behind that song. And of course, Carol chose that because that was really the story of his life. And he was pastoring Union Bleachery Baptist Church at the time. My! And then he went to, well, moved to Union, then he fell, and then he came back, and he ended his ministry at West Greenville Baptist Church. But that song that he wrote was really, literally, the desire of his heart. And he lived that yeah. song. So when you read that story behind wow. it and see the picture of him and Miss Grace, and it just tells the story. He, a lot of that music that he wrote, he wrote a bunch of songs yeah. that was just an example of his testimony of his life. 
and, and you know, folks, uh, you're hearing tonight just a snippet of the information that you can get in this book. And, you know, this is something that uh, I, I believe, uh, you know, every born-again believer needs because, listen, whether you're in the choir or not, uh, God put a song in your heart and it's in there somewhere and uh, it may be you want to learn a little bit more about some of those songs that you hear at church or that you sing in the car <laughs> in the shower or in the backyard when you're cutting the grass I don't know but there it is he keeps me singing and I am just fascinated by this and the information that um, that's in here and you will be all the wiser and you will be all the better if uh, you go and, and you uh, call uh, Don or write him, you get a copy of this book. Right? Remember, they, Dr. Williams and uh, uh, Mr. Hawkins will gladly autograph it for you. Uh, all you need to do is, is give them a call. Don, you're looking at a song there. Are you getting ready to sing? You give us a background. No, I was just thinking about uh, Horatio Spafford. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see and what was going through his mind when he wrote that song, It Is uh, Well. Can you imagine I, what? I, no, I can't. Losing your family. You're out at the point. It'd be like on the Titanic going back out mm -hmm. there after, you know, you going. And, and then and having lost your family in the Titanic, going back out there to the spot that it sank and then writing a song to say, when peace like a river extended my, my way. way, when sorrows like seas sea billow, billow road. Road. You know that he's seeing that. Uh, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it's uh, bien for my corazón. I mean, you know, it's just, oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's had to be, it really is anointed by God. The words had to come yeah. right out of the heart of God, knowing that whatever we go through, yeah. Yeah. and our heart's right, yeah. we're, going, we're going to be all right in the end. And, and you know, so tonight we've been trying to share with you uh, where a lot of this music has come from, and... Uh, a lot of you have been calling in with your prayer requests. Yeah, and it may be that maybe the songs that you've heard already have spurred something within your heart and you felt like you needed to call. You, you, someone, so many people calling for healing. Uh, so many times when we're here at, at Nightline, people call for healing. You, you need that physical healing. Don't you dare forget in the book of Exodus, it says, I am the God that healeth thee. That's Yahweh speaking. I am the God that healeth thee. Many of you called in tonight. You need to keep up your exercise. And again, praying for healing, financial healing, praying for strength. People are calling in. Uh, you're asking us uh, to pray for uh, your great-grandmother, pray for uh, your dad. Uh, you're asking us to uh, pray for someone's feet and leg and arms. Uh, they've been hurt. We, we are praying for you. Again, prayer for healing. We're going to go to the Lord right now as we come up on the hard break here at 9 o'clock. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Williams and, and uh, Don Harkins, pass some of those down to Dr. Williams, if you will. And Dr. Williams, we have just a, about a, a minute before we get ready for the hard break. Would you offer prayer on behalf of all these collectively yes. that have called in? Yes. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and we bring these names and these circumstances, these families, these churches Lord, uh, to you your Lord, throne Lord. tonight, Lord, and we bring them to you knowing that you know every prayer and we know you know every need yes. that's there, and we ask through the power of your Holy Spirit that you would yes. speak to these folks and reassure them, let them know that we're praying here, but we know knowing that their prayers are being heard in heaven, and God, that the answer is on the way and that you care about every need in their lives. May they continue to trust you and look to you and believe that the answer to their life and to their problem, Lord, that Jesus comes through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this time together tonight on the air. We pray for all these requests that have been sent in. Lord, you know every need that's out yes. there. And we pray through the, your presence and those needs that these folks can see and know and experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the healing that comes through coming to you. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, we prayed collectively for you. Okay, we'll pray individually for you tomorrow. But we want to encourage you now. We're coming up on 9 o'clock. And uh, I want to encourage you to continue calling them. Call us with your favorite hymns we're, we're, or songs. I mean, that's important. And uh, it might be that, uh, you know, Don, we get some of these in here tonight and we give them to you. And you may find that, you know, maybe in a sequel to a sequel, 
there might be songs that are a little more uh, contemporary that we've been singing for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Because He Lives, for example. Um, one of those great songs. Without Him I would be, we got that in here tonight, Without mm -hmm. Him, one, another Gaither number. Um, and so we want to encourage you. What is your favorite? We're not asking you if, if you sing it or if they sing it at church. What is your favorite hymn? Call us and tell us. We'll write it down. We'll get it over here to uh, Dr. Williams and, and Don Harkin. And hey, who knows? Uh, it might be the seed that's needed to be in the next sequel or the sequel to the sequel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're counting on you. Remember, our prayer partners are standing by for you. Thank you so much, Don. We have so many, gracious, so many have called in tonight. So many of you. And we want to thank you. Keep those prayer partners busy. 864-244-1616. All right? Please keep them busy. The busier they are, the happier they are. And if listen to me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you know all about these songs, you know all about who wrote them and why, but you don't know Jesus. We want to tell you how you can know Him, okay? We really do. So pick up that phone and call us, even during the hard break, even while we run, have a commercial there. You call us. We're waiting on you to call. All right, so please do. It's almost 9 o'clock. Dr. Williams, uh, Don Harkins will be here. I'm Pastor Benny. See you in just a minute.